Hello, everybody, and welcome to Adelante Chicago. I'm Lourdes Duarte. Thank you so much for joining us today. Bienvenidos. Let's begin by bringing back a tradition after this pandemic. One of the biggest events of the year, making a comeback. Chicago's Latino Film Festival was one of the first events last year that had to take a bit of a backseat due to the pandemic. This year it had to make a few adjustments, but it is back and it is a favorite. Joining us now to tell us a little bit more about this year's Latino Film Festival. There he is, Alejandro Riera. Nice to talk to you. Hi, hello, sir. Hey, how are you? <laughs> it's been seven months since we last spoke when we had oh. to postpone the 36th edition no from our kidding. April time slot to September. But well, we're back in April. We're back in the spring. We're okay. back right now. Trying to get back into that tradition. Things slowly exactly. getting back to normal. And this is such an important event uh, every year. I think so many people look forward to it. Um, how difficult has it been this time around to get it off the ground? It wasn't as difficult as people came to virtual last year. You know, last year we really were monitoring the situation throughout the summer, and it wasn't until late July that we decided to really embrace the virtual environment. Uh, we didn't have time to prepare for a drive-in setting the way other festivals and, and film organizations had. So this year we decided that as a, as a transition to going back to the theaters next year in 2022, that we will do three drive-in screenings at Chi-Town Movies, uh, one of them which started last Thursday. And the second one, we will be talking about the next two drive-in later on as we watch some of the selections for today's program. And we decided to keep the virtual aspect of it. One of the nice things about going virtual last year was that we were able to reach audiences in Illinois that we were able to reach before, uh, you know. Uh, we were able to reach audiences in the suburbs who weren't, weren't able or couldn't make the trip to downtown Chicago on a weekday to watch the festival. We were able to attract audiences from Little Village for the same yeah. reason. Sometimes they can come to the theater on a weekday to watch the festival. So we looked at, at the virtual environment as an opportunity to grow that audience. And then this year we decided, well, you know, why keep it in Illinois? Why won't, don't we take it to the rest <laughs> of the Midwest? Yeah, you so got we're bringing the. Yeah. All new fans, all new fans of the Latino Film Festival, which is great. So we're now going to be, we're now going to be, people like in Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Iowa, and Indiana will have the chance to watch about 90% of our program. We're already getting some traction. I mean, I've seen okay. some ticket sales coming from some so of these let's, states. So let's look at some of these movies, though, as we kind of talk about ticket sales and all that stuff. I want to bring up this Rita Moreno uh, film. Uh, we've got a little bit of sound and video, so let me bring it up. Wear your nationality like a flag. Be proud of it. Be proud of Puerto Rican. Be proud of it. Oh, that footage. I love it, Alejandro. What can you tell us about that? Rita Moreno, just a girl who's got to go for it. That's the new documentary by Miriam Perez Riera, Puerto Rican filmmaker. It's our second drive in screening next Monday, April 12th. It's the No Holds Bar story of Rita Moreno from the moment she left the island to the present time. Uh, it shows us a Rita that has, is coming to terms with a lot of the ups and downs of her own life. Uh, it's a film that puts her life within the context of the sexism and racism in Hollywood throughout the years. It's a film that also looks at her legacy and how it has impacted so many other careers. And then there's Rita telling it like it is, <laughs> right in front of you. I mean, the way she's set up in the film, it's like she's sitting in this chair, staring right at you at the camera, and she's like not letting it, you know, she's pretty much tells all. It's a, pretty much her breaking free. That's her. That's, That's her. her. Yeah, she and doesn't hold believe, anything back. That's for sure. And can you believe she's turning 90 in I can't, December? I can't. She is full you know. of energy, full of energy. Okay, so that's one to look forward to. A second one that we've got here on the list is Landfall. What's that one about? Landfall is a documentary by Cecilia Aldarondo that looks at the aftermath of Hurricanes Maria and Rita in Puerto Rico back in 2017. Oh, wow. It looks at the psychological, political, and economic impact this, this, this hurricane had. It looks at events happening in the island from the moment the hurricane left the island to those massive protests in Old San Juan that led to the resignation of Governor Ricky Rosselló. And it's still a very uh, relevant film in the sense that, you know, after this film was edited and released in festivals everywhere, you know, Puerto Rico suffered additional tragedies. It suffered these massive earthquakes on the south and part of the island. It's suffering from a massive COVID outbreak. I mean, it's, it paints the portrait of an island that is in perpetual PTSD because of all these tragedies and puts it within the context of its relationships to the United States. It's a very powerful, very poignant film. One of my favorite documentaries last year. I'm very happy that we have it at the festival this year. Is that part of a drive-in uh, view? 
viewing as well? Or no, no, that one okay. you can see virtually. That one is one of our virtual offerings. Okay. So Rita, Rita is our second drive-in screening. We'll be talking, I think, about our third one shortly, but we'll keep the best for last. How's that? Okay, well, the next one here is Rosa's wedding. Rosa's wedding. Oh, that one is a wonderful, wonderful, quirky comedy from Isiar Boyain. Uh, it's the story of this woman. Her name is Rosa, and she spent all of her life pleasing everybody in her family and not doing anything for herself until she finally says, you know what, enough is enough. I'm going to start taking care of myself. I'm going to open up my own business. And you know what? I'm going to prepare a wedding ceremony, but it's a wedding ceremony for myself. I'm marrying me. <laughs> Oh. And when she makes that decision, her family all very in a very Spanish, traditionally Spanish, you know, way, uh, decides to try to curtail those plans of letting Rosa be herself. And it's a very, very funny, but also very poignant comedy about a woman who tries to declare her independence. Uh, Isiar Boyen is an extraordinary Spanish filmmaker. It has a wonderful performance from Candela Peña. Uh, you may recognize one of the actors, Sergi Lopez from Pan's Labyrinth. He played the uh, fashion yeah. villain in Pan's Labyrinth, and he's a wonderful character actor from Spain and Isier Boyan is one of the most important women filmmakers of the last 20 years from Spain. Okay, and it, you see some of the pic picturesque towns of Spain there in oh, the background. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, so pretty. I love it. Okay, last one you said save the best for last, and that yep. is El Cuartito, the little room, I guess we can translate it to. Yep. Where's that it's, one from? It's our third and final driving screening on Saturdays. Uh, oh my God, I'm forgetting it's April already. <laughs> the pandemic blurs days together. Saturday, April 17th is our final driving screening. It's exclusive drive in. There's no virtual component to this one. You only have a chance to see it at the drive-in. It's a Puerto Rico-Argentinian co-production directed okay. by Marcos Carnevale, the director of Elsa and Fred. And it's the story of these five travelers who arrive to the international airport in Puerto Rico for different reasons. And when they sort of start, you know, telling little lies to immigration authorities, they are locked into this room by the uh, by uh, national security because, you know, they're rather suspicious. And it's a whole comedy about misperceptions, oh, about it's a comedy. immigration, okay. about queer. And it's very topical. If you look at the, at this, at the trailers right now, uh, it's very, very topical, uh, given what's happening in the border right now. Uh, it's a little bit of a, even though belated, you know, little little critique of the former administration, okay. but it's uh, it's a North American premiere. Marcos Carnavale has, uh, you know, some of our most popular films at the festival have come from Marcos's uh, lens. So it's a treat to have this film. It's a treat to have it as a North American premiere. And it's, again, as I said before, it's a drive-in exclusive. I mean, you will only see this at the drive-in. These all look fantastic, Alejandro. I'm excited. These all look great. Okay, so if people want to be a part of this, get tickets, watch any of these uh, drive-in shows, what, what do they need to do? Always, same place, same time, everywhere, 24-7, Latino code. Actually, that's a general, general uh, website. You need to go to ChicagoLatinoFilmFestival.org. That's the website for you to go. Latino Cultural Center is our home base, the International Latino Cultural Center of Chicago, which produces the Chicago Latino Film Festival. But for anything and everything ticket-wise, the Chicago Latino Film Festival.org website will be your go-to place. Okay, I'll link it to my uh, social media posts as well. Uh, so that Absolutely. Tell there. everybody. Okay. Tell, tell your everybody. Tell everybody. Todos invitados. Okay, Alejandro, muchas gracias. Thank you to you. <laughs> we'll talk again soon and good luck this year. And I'm so looking forward to 2022 um, to what? To see the, some Wait. of the films live and in color, right? And the big theater <laughs> and hopefully with guests. Oh, one more thing. We have conversations with filmmakers. So stay okay. tuned for those after some of the films when you watch them virtually. All right. Sounds good. Thank you, sir.